G'day, it's Tony Burke, the Environment Minister. I'm here in Fremantle, where we've just released the draft maps for the South West, West region of bioregional planning. That's the planning for protecting some of our precious marine areas. Uh, we've had consultation going on for a long time uh, with environment groups, with fishing groups, with industry groups, and uh, now that enters a formal process where between now and the 8th of August, there's a chance for people to visit the web page, have a look at the different levels of protection that are being offered, and to send in to us your views on where you think things should go. Now, I've got with me Tim Nicholl. Last time we, we caught up, we were, we were at Rotnest. Rotnest Island, yes. <laughs> um, And we were talking about this then, and uh, we were looking out over Perth Canyon, effectively, um, from the island that we're at. Uh, now, we've ended up with a situation where there's uh, some marine parks, there's some special use zones, uh, there's some multiple use zones and what um, I wouldn't mind first of all uh, is just a reflection from yourself because you yeah, Save Our Marine Life campaign has been at this for years. Mm. We're now at the stage where you must see uh, that we're getting closer to having a higher level of protection of marine assets which if they'd been on land always would have been protected. Uh, is there that sense in the campaign that you're getting closer? I guess what we've seen today is um, a, a lot of, well obviously sanctuary zones is a level of protection that we're looking for and that's what the uh, science evidence has been uh, pointing towards we need and, and all through our oceans as a network of marine sanctuaries. So today what we've seen is um, you know, a, a large area of sanctuaries in the southern corner of the state, uh, which is, is, is a good step. Um, but a lot of the, the iconic areas and areas that are, are well loved by West Australians, such as the Ibrolis Islands, uh, Perth Canyon where we last met, yep. uh, and uh, Geograph Bay, which is an important feeding and breeding area for a large number of marine life, including areas that are you know, fish like the dewfish that are very important to wreck fishing and, and, and divers and so on, have not got the sanctuary protection that they need, in fact have none. So okay. um, that's, well, let's, let's, let's go yeah, through let's it map by map. Look. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's a chance for for you to flag what I've no doubt a whole lot of your members will be flagging during this, this period of consultation. That will be our plan, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> if, we, if we start at the Abrolhos, mm. uh, now the Abrolhos Islands themselves are within state waters Absolutely. and there's already a level of protection there, is that right? Uh, there, is, there is some protection, I think, uh, that's yeah, an issue for another day. Okay. So, yes. Okay, well take me through, uh, we've got the, uh, the Marine National Park, which is the green area marked here, which is a small area, the dark blue is a special purpose zone which knocks out demersal trawling only yeah. and the multiple use zone uh, knocks out demersal trawling, demersal longline and uh, demersal gillnet. Uh, what's, tell me a bit about your sense of the environmental values here and where you think uh, we've got it right, where you think we've fallen short. Sure, I mean the Abrolhos Islands themselves, um, as you mentioned, are very important. It's a, a jewel in the crown of the biodiversity of the West Coast. It's a um, coral reef uh, habitat and some 1,500 species live there. Um, I think you know, the national park that's there, it, it far offshore, it does protect some um, important upwelling and eddy areas, which are, uh, uh, you get uh, uh, sort of the pelagic uh, fish coming through those areas and that's important. Uh, further in you've got the canyons and the area around the islands themselves and some inshore lagoons and um, as, as those areas uh, are at the moment without sanctuaries um, and, and those obviously some of the areas where those important species live. Okay, if we then go to Durian, uh, Commonwealth Marine Reserve, tell me about this one. Yeah, Durian's um, on the Rottnest Shelf and that's sort of I guess the, the playground in Perth's backyard. There's, to the south there's Geograph Bay which we'll talk about and to the north um, Rottnest Shelf and uh, important area for wreck fishing and diving uh, and it's contiguous with the Durian Bay Park but as you see at the moment there's, um, that's, that's just a marine park with no sanctuaries also. Okay. Mm. Now tell me from your perspective, uh, you say no sanctuaries, it is true though that there's activity that would be banned, uh, why is it your view that uh, that's not enough? Yeah, I, I guess the science evidence really shows that um, when you have marine sanctuaries you get that uh, massive increase in the abundance and size of marine life. And when you have sort of partial closures, you, you have some conservation benefits, but you don't see that kind of um, explosive uh, result where, where you get that really, um, uh, the, the big fish really come back into the areas. And that's kind of what we've been looking for around the coasts. And we'll be out, I guess, talking to these communities and explaining why those benefits uh, are necessary and what the benefits would be if we had more sanctuaries in some of these areas. So is your principal concern the commercial activities that are still allowed in these areas or the wreck activities? What's your 
do you have a principal concern? Yeah. Or well, just a lot? It really, it's, it's about, well, the science, I guess, shows us that when you remove all fishing and mining pressure from the area, that's when you get the explosive increase in life. And a great example is in uh, New Zealand. There's a, a sanctuary there. It's probably the most uh, dramatic example. They took out commercial fishing and there was no real increase. But then when they um, took out recreational fishing as well, within a few years, there was 14 times more large snapper in that reserve, in that sanctuary, that reserve or national park. And that's the sort of um, uh, benefits that we're looking for uh, along the coast that uh, we won't see unless we see sanctuaries. Okay, we then go to Perth Canyon. Iconic place, I'll let it speak for yeah, itself, but I'll let you have a go. Amazing place, great, largely in the Grand Canyon and, and surprisingly largely unknown to a lot of Perth audiences until very recently. It's one of the three areas in Australia where the blue whale, whale feeds, but also a number of other whales. And a lot of uh, deep water demersal fish species live, and in particular this inshore area, which has been included in the park, which is great, um, but has no sanctuaries, is, is very important to, um, you know, we've had a big depletion in the, the large fish stocks around Perth, and, and some sanctuaries in that area would certainly help to bring the big fish back into Perth's waters, which would be great for diving and, and for fishing. Now, now, you've said some sanctuaries in that area. Does does that mean you're seeking to change the colour of the whole blue zone or is your frustration that none of it's uh, there as a marine national park? Exactly. I think there should be within there some, some marine national parks within, within that park rather than necessarily having the whole park as a, as a... And I think that's true of all these areas closer to shore. It's about having a, a mosaic, I suppose, of fully protected areas uh, next door to uh, areas that are used for fishing. And that way we can have those benefits but also continue to use the, those areas for, for, for fishing and so on as well. Okay. And we then go to Southwest Corner. Now, you've got to at least give us credit. This becomes one of the biggest national parks, marine national parks in the world. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate you're about to say not big enough. Is that the deal? Or Actually, no, well, no, I was not. I wasn't. Um, <laughs> well, there's, there's two things about the Southwest Corner. One is right. the, the large marine national park is an excellent um, protection of the offshore marine environment. So the Diamantina Fracture Zone, which is uh, Australia's biggest mountain range, is, is very well yeah. protected. Six kilometres down. Six kilometres. It's an incredible area and to explore it would be amazing. But again, areas like Geograph Bay, um, closer to shore, that mosaic of national parks in, in, in that park could really bring some great benefits uh, to, to, to those in their shore communities and that's something that we'll certainly be seeking. But, you know, those deep shore, those deep water habitats have been have been picked up and that's, that's a fantastic development. Okay. Uh, then where the last of the WA ones, the Eastern Recherche. Uh, originally, we were always talking Eastern Recherche and Western, but Western Recherche has now been incorporated into that mm. uh, southwest corner. So the Eastern Recherche, can you take me through this? Yeah, the Recherche archipelago is 30% um, of Australia's unique fish live there, so it's, a, it's an important area for fish diversity and, and a whole lot of other um, marine species. You know, whales and seals use that area quite extensively as a, a breeding and feeding ground. And it's good to see that the sanctuary zones have come uh, through that area through to the shelf, and you know that's um, uh, we'll have a more detailed look, but that's looking looking pretty good at the moment. Okay. We're then in the South Australian zone. Uh, now this is one where there's already an existing Commonwealth Reserve. Uh, in the extension of the Great Australian Bite area, uh, but then going broader. Reflections on this one? Yeah, it's good to see again some sanctuaries uh, close to the shore where often the, the pressure is, is strongest. Um, I suppose we'll be talking to our South Australian cousins a bit more about some of the detail of those areas. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then the, the last one here, um, which incorporates both the Western Kangaroo Island section and the Western Air uh, Commonwealth Marine Reserve. Yeah, no, the, this area is really important. Again, it's another one of the blue whale feeding grounds and blue whales feed there, but that also means a lot of other whale species are, are using that area. And uh, it's very, very important. You know, 80% of Australia's sea lion population is in South Australia. So this park is, you know, obviously designed to protect some of those values. Um, and we'll, again, we'll have to have a bit of a look. I'm not intimately, you know, in, I don't know that area very well. So I'll um, be talking to our South Australian colleagues about um, you know, how, how well that, that, that park is, is representing those values. Okay, well the, the Save Our Marine Life campaign has been extraordinarily active. Uh, a day doesn't go by without a new set of postcards landing on my desk. Uh, how will you be using this period of consultation? Yeah, look, we're going to be um, out in the community and we're going to be talking to people about um, what, what, uh, the, why we need marine sanctuaries, as we've been discussing, and, and what's sort of in and out of this network and, and really how they can be in touch with you um, and, and let you know that uh, you know, we can maybe do a little better um, when this thing is wrapped up in three months' time. But, um, you know, it's, they, we've got a great opportunity and you've presented our community with a great opportunity um, to, 
to, to take something forward and, and to actually get a, a really good network of protection in the southwest. So we're looking forward to, um, to speak, being out in the community and, and, and getting those messages through to you. Yeah, well, it's a, a big opportunity we've got in front of us. As I say, we're close to the finishing line, uh, not there yet. And all that consultation and engagement from the community gets us that little bit closer to starting to do in the oceans the sorts of levels of protection that people have done for generations in Australia on land. That's right, well, it's almost assumed that we have that protection by a lot of people in the community and they're quite shocked to find out how little is protected. So that's a, that's a problem that we, are, you know, we can work to redress and we look forward to the next three months. Okay, Tim, great to see you again. Thanks, Tony. Thank Cheers. you.